So this video simply uh, shows you how to solve a proportion. Uh, we'll introduce what a proportion is and then uh, use uh, algebraic techniques to, uh, to find a solution to them. Uh, you know, for instance, that two-fifths is equal to, uh, say, six-fifteenths. Okay. If you reduce six-fifteenths by dividing top and bottom by three, you get two-fifths. You've been using that skill for a while. Well, a proportion is a statement that two fractions are equal to each other. That's, that's what we mean by this type of equation. It's simply called a proportion. And this one's fairly boring, but I want you to notice something interesting about it. Multiply those two numbers together. You get 30. Multiply those two numbers together. You get 30. Well, that's interesting. Let's look at another uh, set of uh, of fractions that are equal to each other. How about uh, three sevenths and how about, um, uh, let's see, nine twenty-firsts. Okay. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's multiply across this way and we get 63. If I multiply across this way, lost my screen. There we go. If I multiply across this way, I also get 63. What we found out here is that it doesn't matter what the equations are, or what the fractions are, if they're equal to each other, then their cross products, we call these multiplying across this way the cross products, the cross products are equal. I'm going to take that information and move it off to the side here. And so a, a question that's frequently asked is this. Are 3 elevenths and say 7 fiftieths equal to each other? Well, the only way they could be equal to each other is if their cross products are equal. Is it true that that multiplied together, which is 150, equals that multiplied together? Nope. Okay. So they're not equal. So we're going to take advantage of that fact when we solve a proportion. Okay. So we're going to be solving this proportion here. and. Uh, the technique we'll use will be this. Multiply these two numbers together and you get 28. Multiply those two numbers together, you get 10n. Well, the fact that there's an equal sign in the middle of this thing means that these two cross products have to be equal. Okay. Well, if they're equal, then we can easily find out what n is. Divide both sides by 10, n must be 2.8. And of course, you can always check that answer by putting it in there. Uh, 7 tenths, or 7 divided by 10 is 0.7, and 2.8 divided by 4 is also 0.7. Let's look at another one. I'm going to use the same cross product idea. Those two numbers multiplied together, 3b has to be equal to 7 times 10, 70. Well, if they're equal, then we can divide, and you get either leave it as 70 thirds, or if you feel like you need to write it as an improper fraction, go ahead, or a decimal. So, when I solve two, when I, when I have a proportion, which is two fractions that are set equal to each other, to solve, I simply need to do the cross products. Well, we're going to take advantage of that here on this next question, but it looks a little bit more complicated. But we're going to use the same idea. 
If I multiply these two numbers together, I'm supposed to get the same thing as when I multiply those two together. Well, how do I write that, though? Well, how about this? 8 times r minus 3. And my students frequently ask me, why did you put parentheses in there? There weren't any to start with. Well, I had to because I'm not... I'm not supposed to just multiply the 8 by the r, or the 8 by the minus 3. I'm supposed to multiply 8 by everything. So putting the parentheses around the r minus 3 reminds me I'm multiplying 8 times everything. So now we've used techniques on this to uh, solve for a while. How about if I write 8r minus 24? Okay, I simply use the distributive property, and that equals 35. Okay. Adding 24 to each side gets me 8r equals 59. And now dividing by 8 on both sides gets me an answer. That's not going to be a whole number, so I'll just leave it as 59 eighths. If you'd like to write it as a decimal or a mixed fraction, uh, knock yourself out. Here's another example. Same idea. 60 is supposed to be equal to 4 times x plus 6. Again, I used parentheses on that to remind myself, multiply the 4 times everything up here, not just the x or just the 6. Solving this, I'll just use classic algebra techniques. 36 equals 4x. So divide top and bottom by, or divide left and right by 4x equals 9. Again, you can always put this back in and see if it works. Okay? I happen to know that 6 divided by 4 is 1.2, no, I'm sorry, 1.5. So let's check and see if I get the same thing here. If I put 9 in there, 9 plus 6 is 15. And 15 divided by 10 is also 1.5. So here's one final one to solve. And this one looks more complicated because it has ends on both sides. But we've had enough experience solving proportions that we know exactly what to do. Multiply these two things together, and you'll get 2n. Please pardon the bell ringing. The class is over. I get 2n there. Multiplying across this way gets me 4 times n plus 7. And now I simply have an equation to solve. Okay, I use the distributive property. I've noticed that all of the non-n's are on the right side, so I'll get rid of n's on the right side by subtracting. That gets me negative 2n equals 28. Dividing by negative 2 on both sides gets me negative 14. And there's my answer. All right, I hope that was a good introduction to solving proportions.